So the 12 mile buffer zone is what nations worldwide concurred to for nautical, nautical space of vessels before they enter from foreign waters into territorial waters, okay, or countries' waters. And so worldwide, they put up a 12 mile zone for when they could, if a foreign vessel were to come this way, when they hit that 12 mile zone and come in, our customs and policies for our Coast Guard can go up and do inspections and you know find out you know, do manifest inspections you know this is a security issue for a 12 mile buffer zone well federal state and county courthouses city courthouses are all into the same venue because of their advertisement that they're foreigners on our land which means they're creating flag desecration creating a foreign venue and, the, and you can look that up under Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, we call it Document Contract Claims 44.1. When you read the style of communication in 44.1, it says, the, I don't have a board here, but it says the court, comma, not jury. But the T is in brackets. So it says he court, not jury, which is adverb, verb, adverb, verb, which is in compliance with no law or fact shall be tried in court. So they're moving you into a, a, a foreign policy or a foreign law, foreign jurisdiction, through the yellow French flag, which is a flag de desecration and viola violation of Title 36, Section 176, Subsection G. So they're setting up a foreign venue, and that foreign venue is the same foreign venue as the foreign venue ship coming into our waters. So jurisdiction-wise, they only have jurisdiction for 12 circumference miles of that. But they have to go post-road miles. What that means is when you get a ticket by any law enforcement officer in the United States on the roads, they put the mile marker, that's the post-road, the location, the spatial location of where the, 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 the damage occurred or the, 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 the fine or whatever they're trying to collect on you. So it's a 12 mile buffer zone. So that courthouse has jurisdiction for 12 miles. For the most part, other than rural areas in the United States, all courthouses are spaced out from municipality to, to municipality under 12 mile buffer zones. So some will be a little bit different. They'll have a, a, in the rural areas, they'll have a substation for a sheriff's department. So it'll go from the courthouse to the sheriff's department and they'll have, a, but in the rural areas, it's a little bit, it's a little bit different. In Wyoming, where I'm from, all, like the state troopers, uh, my, one of my students found this, all state troopers authorizations were repealed. I think it was back in 2000 or 1999, I can't remember. So you have to go back and look under these amendment codes because a lot of, around 1999 and 2000, a lot of these sheriffs and on the federal side, highway troopers, a lot of the troopers' authorizations were repealed, which means because the United States didn't exist, so they had no, so at that point, it just became a collection agency on the unsuspecting of the American people. So that's where the 12 mile I don't know where it came from, but it's just what the, all countries agree to. If we were to take our vessels, our ships, try to go into Japan, again, there's that 12 mile buffer zone. So that's so how that works. Waters to nation well, under the yellow fringe flag, the courthouses are under the yellow fringe flag. So who are they? No, they, they can't identify. You go to Washington, D.C., you go to the White House, it's the two by five Obama flag, right? It's, it's a flag with no authorization. It's not even re registered anywhere. So you just got to flag etiquette. When you come into contract, the first rule of contract, study law of the flag. And that will tell you whose colors and whose manifest you're going to be under. And those who wish to come into contract with that can join that contract. They couldn't establish any more with the flag and make it stick because the United States was coming out of bankruptcy. And so they knew the tricks. And they were, they were planning this big takeover of We the People. And I fought really hard to, to stop it in my case. I fought really, really hard. Uh, and they tried really, really hard to get me to surrender. 
We, we've actually won a lot of cases in the last two years. I won a lot of cases against the Department of Interior in Wyoming, against the, uh, the BLM and the, the National Forest Boys, because we, we classify their office in their 12-mile range from where they go to work every morning and where they log in. And so they're not allowed into our land. Those are the people's lands. It's up to us to manage them and tell them what, what we want to do with them. And there's a lot that can be, there's a lot of waste going on there. If you look at my forestry program for what I built, there, there's uh, environmental s uh, security and safeguard mechanisms built into that. It'll cost a little bit, but it'll save us a lot of money and clean up a lot of, a lot of the catastrophes that are there. You know, I, I used to have it sat down with the right people, the right infrastructure. Instead of building roads into there, we can come in with helicopters. I mean, there's the, the technology is there to do a lot more, but they make it so expensive that the average logger can't make a bid on that because you can't. Oh, go ahead. I actually saw them tearing out logging roads in Minnesota, northern Minnesota. Uh, like, there were, there were, you know, roads that people could get to the forest uh, to go on to or, or whatever. They were just low maintenance. Yeah, what, what, the, what they're doing is coming in with, in Wyoming, they're coming in with conservation groups and they're buying up all the trailheads. And then they're making them their own nature conservatories and keeping all the people out so you can't get back into the woods. That's a pretty standard. And then, of course, they put all the scare tactics in there with the grizzly bears and the wolves and, you know, try to scare you with that. But uh, if, if you've seen and if you've done any of the studies on the beetle kill and the, uh, the aluminum in the, in the forestry of what they're doing on the chemtrailing, uh, you'll see that there's a lot of wood out there that could be salvaged and brought to for the use of the people, uh, which will actually clean a lot of things up. But... We'll get into that when we need to. Are, are the forests and lands owned by the United Nations now? I mean, no, the United Nations the doesn't United have Nations. off. The United Nations, when I met with the head of the Postal Administration for the United Nations, they told me that their corporation does not have authorization to exist as a corporation. They own nothing. They're going off of the bluff of the people. So don't fall for any traps by the United Nations, please. Yeah. That's legitimate. If you go up to, I mean, I can tell you the names of the trailheads. If you go up into there, you cannot There's get on no no, well, they take the public easements out under that. They they try to buy that with that, so they make it impossible to get Is into it the a corporation or individual. Buy it? It's a uh, um, foundations, foundations. nonprofit, uh, nonprofit organizations. My bad. So are people authorized for use of the land? Yeah, absolutely. We mail ourselves in there all the time. We set up, <laughs> instead of mailboxes, we put mail buckets. We take ourselves, yeah, yeah, we put, we, I got them all over Wyoming. You bet, you bet, I got a whole gambit of things that I'm in the middle of. You bet, you bet. still out of anybody's 12 nautical miles? Yeah, yeah, out of the 12 nautical miles, and then, but I filed for lodial title for Planet Earth in Now Space. And I'm yeah, so I, I that, yeah. yeah, so we, we, we did that uh, to, for the miners, I'm involved with a lot of different miners, and they're blasting out roads, and they use my technology all the time in Wyoming. Oh! Yeah, I guess I can. I, <laughs> stuff I don't talk about. Okay, so I was at a, a function. Uh, I coach a 9- and 10-year-old baseball team in Wyoming. And... Um, at the function, I was approached by um, the Fremont County Sheriff's Department, who all sheriffs and highway troopers have watched the War Castle series in Wyoming. And they are tracking and told me that I'm not the same person I used to be. And I said, no. And now they comprehend. Because they asked me if I was mad at them for being sheriffs. And I said, well, number one, I wouldn't want your job. I says, and I feel, feel really sorry that you have to be out here managing all this craziness and be the, f the, the kicking stool on both sides of the equation because you've got to turn over the bad guys, the people that are causing damage to a crooked judicial system with no authorization. I says, I cannot be mad at you. However, we can clean this up and I'm on your side. I said, I'm on your, the side of correctness. I don't want, the, the, the police officers are there some good, some bad. There's good and bad in everything. So you have to look at that. And, and you have to judge the spirit and, the, and the, the condition of each scenario that you go into. Each one differs depending on the conditions of mind that are there, the experience, the energy that you bring, the energy that's being brought. So you have to test those under the, uh, under the psychology of 
of the scene of a crime. Because it's, I consider them all in the scene of a crime because they're using fictitious grammar in violation of Title 18, Section, or th uh, Section 1001. Uh, so, but they're, they were very nice to me, and uh, I was pretty blown blown away that they approached me and and wa have watched the documentary. I've, it made me feel good, and it actually made them feel good because I was their friend from long ago. And so they're like, yes, we knew you were a good guy. We knew it. We just didn't understand it. I says, I am not here as a bad guy. I'm here to catch bad guys and to give closure about what's happened to this country. Once we figure out what's happened to this country, we can figure out how to use it. Back to your question on the forest and all these things. How do we use these things now? Because it's our job to remember, governments are because we the people allow. But if we the people have not figured out how to tell them what to do, then how can we expect anything back out of them? And they have the social engineering so bad, obey, 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 and then they've got the chemical imbalance and the division of the homes and all these things built in to create all this wrong closure, wrong information, strife, fight, race, this, that, this, that. Nobody knows heads or tails and nobody can trust anyone. Because remember, a contract's only as good as the man standing behind it and the words on the performance of what that contract means. Contracts, uh, the best contract in the world is when you can look across the table, absolutely trust that person, put out your hand and shake that hand. That is the best contract in the world. You look them in the eye, you know the job's going to get done. There's a trust there. The only reason why we have written contract is because people can't do that anymore. That's the problem. Yeah, and, 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 so, and so, so, so we have to remember that when we look at all these contracts. The most valuable contract that you can have is your word. And that's why I get a little bit on point, and that's why I'm on so on point, because I live to the death. Meaning, no, I have to, because of where I've claimed, to what I've done, what I've been, what I've stood up for, how I mean, literally, for sheriffs to move me, they had to kick my ass for years. Do you know what type of commitment that takes to stand there and not move and have them grab you around by the ears, grab you by the handcuff, grab you by the hair, and throw you down the hall? You got any idea? And to not be mad about it because you know that they're in usury and you have to sit there and take it? That's tough. So I established robot treaties with them where they put their hands on my back, move me, put my hand on my left, move me. <laughs> Because I couldn't correspond with them, we had to figure out how to get me through there. I would hold trials in jails, put police officers on trial in janitor's closets. They'd come in with their cameras and be a judge, be who I am. So we could get food mailed into me, get all the things needed mailed into me so I could just survive. They believed me, because I did it all. It's a lot, and it's a big pill to swallow, and I get it. But it was done. Next question. Um, who decided that the, uh, oh. the roads and the buildings are all foreign to the soil? Well, the roads is a condition of contract, which means the contract was made through building, right? So they're unus under usury with the money. The money system that they use to build the road is f under a yellow fringe flag and foreign to this country. If you believe that the Federal Reserve is part of the United States, then you should go down there. It's a private outsourced function. So that's the answer to your question. Very simple. Contract. There's no need to pay them off because they were thrown out of the United States in 1999. Nobody knows it. Next question. Uh on the, uh, in the sea pass it talks about uh, domicile, creating a domicile treaty. Yes. And uh, putting up a, a flag on, so to set up your post office at that location in your domicile. Yes. And currently we only have two flags to pick from, from my understanding, the one point, by 1.9. Yes. And then the larger coffin flag. You can use the civil, flag of the peace as well and I can get you the numbers on that on the registration numbers on that as well 
my, I guess my point is I'm, I'm looking for a resolution that's more feasible and affordable for people to duplicate this for themselves and not be like, you know, a $3,000 thing to put up a flag on a property just to have a post office because, you know. But you're paying for usury on function yeah. and things that you haven't figured out. And so what I mean by that is there was a price to be paid for every one of those words on contract. I had to get it out of those judges. They got their pound of flesh on me. They hurt me really, really bad. But I learned a lot. Where did I learn everything? I learned everything right in the middle of those foreign courtrooms. And out of honor to those judges who came off the bench and shared technology with me. Because it cost them money every time they come off the bench. It cost ten grand for a judge to come off the bench, take off his robe, and sit across the table from you. I mean, and, and it's a tough thing to do. I'm the only guy that I know consistently can do that over and over and over and over and over again. Since you're the uh, postmaster general, mm -hmm. is it possible for you, and you're also the chief, commander in chief, can you write an executive order authorizing the use of a two by two by point? 2.9 flag? No, because it's not on, on file for any styles under customs and policy under, um, um, I rewrote, this is going to be, this is going to sound crazy to you guys, I rewrote the um, International Bureau of Weights and Measures Charter in, Le in Lenox, France. And that is where all countries file their styles of communication from everything from flags to inches, centimeters, meters. It's the closure place for the style of communication on your syntax. I disqualified the charter in Lenox, France and rewrote a quantum one. Uh, so the answer is I would have to go back in and redo all that. and. I'm not going to change the flag because so many people have died for the 1 to 1.9 dimension flag. Out of honor to them, I can't do that. Are you going to be reposting on your new site, website, the correct dimensions for the flag that you have? Yeah, you, yeah, we can do that. You've apprehended? Yeah, we can do that. So that people can get closure? Yeah, we'll see. And also, when we took the flag as a prize, as a prize master, prize commissioner, and the mechanics behind that, under Octoritas. We filed that at the Secretary of the Navy's office and then the Navy leased the flag back from us, or from me now. And so um, I don't want to change that construct and I don't really know the new people at the Navy, but I'm grandfathered in under grandfathering to, to have done what I did. One thing about the military that most people are not cognizant of was once you get up high enough, um, you're, you get held on as, as, a, as, a, as a council, a senior council and, and whatnot, and you never, you actually always stay in some kind of form of function of payroll. And so you always have input and, and this and that. So uh, those people that autographed those contracts, it was through Hansford-T. Colin Johnson at the Secretary of the Navy's office and William Seaman, uh, William Colin Ball. I can't... Uh, I, I want to undo all the work that's been done because it took a lot to get in the door. I promise. I spent literally from 1996 to 1999, 2000, I was on the phone for two hours once a week with Navy JAG, different officers in Navy JAG, learning about a lot of stuff and training up on and training them up on grammar and then, you know cross-referencing back with postal flag and military functions. So I don't want to, I mean, I did a lot of work there, and I don't want to undo all that. Thank you. Okay. I have more questions, though. Yeah, okay, okay. Good job. I did work for JAG over for a billboard for a while on the contract, and I had to do the, the public trust to fill out the Form 85 or Form 86, I forget what it is. Okay. Uh, where you've been, how long sure, you've been. Sure, sure, sure. Is that of is that of any particular concern to capture? And oh, go back on your uh, to your discharge. Yeah, but that going back to the because now I serve in the public trust in the. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Working outside the military for JAG and Belvoir. So you signed a public trust on closure. Is that what I'm comprehending? In order to work there, I had to 
be uh, granted a recognized that I sit in the public trust, authorized to sit in the public trust, and serve in that function at JAG and Fort Worth. And what are you asking? Well, do I that, that contract that was there is that is that a uh, usury contract? Well, it'd be if uh, you could call them and ask them. I, 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 what, what, what they consider, are they still uh, under that function? Because are, they would be a trustee in the public trust. Or they could still muster you back through that? Yeah. So, fi yeah, find I'll, out. I'll call and ask them. Yeah, ask them. I, I don't have an answer for that. Okay. Some questions I just don't know. No, no, I'll, I'll give you feedback, whatever. Yeah, that'd be an interesting yeah, question. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, in, in the court system where you have agency and the principal has to bring you a claim as far as the injured party, um, how is the, like, DNR or whatnot getting away with not actually being well, you've already confessed on paperwork before you get there, which means you've signed their paperwork, and then they take that energy and they already start banking it, banking it through their bid bondsmen and through their QSIP numbers and the things that they run on you just even before you get there. They've already run a timeline. Ninety-nine percent of the time when you receive a ticket, they'll break the continuance of the evidence, which means they'll bring your jury trial the 46 days, not 45 days. A lot of times what we do with my with my people as they get the tickets, they return them back to the cop under the Lemon Law under a three day rescission timeline. So that can be also identified. So there's there's a lot of things that can be done there. Can you bring it to federal court? Federal yeah, federal federal postal court, you bet. Well, well, well see, here's the problem. Here's the trick and trap to that. You say there's a state court. But when you go to the state court, what are they asking for? Your federal money. So they're all state. Or I mean, my, my bad, they're all federal. That, that's the problem with that. So it's, it's, you can't have your, you know, your cake and your Lamborghini all in the same, in the same location. You know, you can't be able to eat them both at the same time. So uh, when you did the uh, director's party, you had a... Um meeting with uh, that just made, created foreign correspondence yes um, you know at this time you know we have obviously the, the public needs knowledge and needs yeah. foreign correspondence sure for the um, reporting of the knowledge yeah and that's why I'm starting to get people educated enough to take with me and so I'm kind of excited about that because I don't really like when I used to go to the court systems and they knew I was coming, they'd fill, bring the, fill the courtrooms with first and second graders and call it history day. So I'd be coming up into there with all my people with flags on and then the bailiff would be at the door. Oh yes, this is a uh, public history day for the courtroom. Uh, there's no put standing in a public auditorium for flag law, Russell. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, nobody can come in. So yeah, I'm starting to get witnesses come to witness some of these things that I go do where I've not had a lot of witnesses in the past. The witnesses that I have had, they have some miraculous stories and they can, they're not here to testify, but most of them are in Wyoming, some are in North Carolina right now, some are in uh, uh, Illinois, and they have seen some things in the courtrooms that they can't explain to this day and I can explain it to them because it, it just shouldn't be this way, right? But it is. So, yeah, so I think a the, uh, you know, the alternative media has been hammered and they, the, might, they need the tool. The, the alternative media, yeah, I, I am not a big PR guy. I'm a performer. I go do, I don't really have time because my time is so valuable and I try to put such a value on family. And I'm trying to spend as much time there. I actually ship my family into locations with me. My wife is, you know, we're, we're tired of Jesuits and we're tired of Knights of Malta and we're tired of, you know, we've run into every organization that, you know, that I've put my family in harm's way with these people uh, to, because I just want them to be with me and I feel a lot safer when they're with me. Uh, and so this last year we, I mailed them into D.C., and that was uh, a very different trip for them. They were a little upset about it, the having to go. But, you know, we've been raided by the FBI under SWAT teams and shut down my labs. There's been a lot of things that my life has brought to give them confidence to come with me. And, uh, you know, they don't like to because they consider that all a waste of time in D.C. So... Yeah, the, the education under foreign correspondence. So there's a few foreign correspondents out there that are trying some stuff with their foreign correspondence. I was a little, 
they should have I would have done different things if I were them but they just really didn't have the audience didn't really have the confidence it takes confidence to go do things and the other thing that it does is it takes away from your time and this is the real crime against everybody to learn all this and to do all this whether I like it or not costs one way or another either for your time that you could be taking your time and using it elsewhere to benefit your life or the time or the cost of renting a room, getting in the car, going to Washington DC or whatever, flying or whatever. That's been the, the government knows this. This is their number one ace in the hole is to keep everybody in poverty. This is the number one game because if everybody had the education, if everybody had the funds to show up, if everybody could do it at the same time, do you think we outnumber them? And this, they're very, this is one of their bread and butter psych psyops on all of us to get us arguing amongst our races, to get us arguing amongst our cultures, and to, to, to make us so poor that we don't network, we give up. We can't give up. How do you win? Quitters never win. Because if you quit, you can't win. Correct. Correct. And so this is the tenacity in the fight that I've taken. And it's taken its toll, so I'm real sharp, real pointed. You have to comprehend, the government made me. I get it, Mike takes right. And I'm down with that, if that's what it's going to take. I'm going to go there and be peaceful and be my thing, but I get it. And it's the only thing that they know at this point. Maybe it changes, maybe it doesn't, maybe the audience would change. But there's so many rogue elements, there's so many alternative ops going on and different agendas that it's a very tough thing to compete with. That's why you wouldn't want to be in their public fiduciary positions that don't exist. Because they're up against it. Big time. Big time. The conditioning centers is one of those fiduciary responsibilities, and all they're you know, teaching the children seems like it's conformity and obedience, and with, with void knowledge. Yeah, the the ch the kids of my age, the kids younger than me, the gentlemen, the men and women, uh, we are a product of this this the psychology of the '60s, and and because of that, we 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 are psychologically defeated for a fight because that was peace and love. So, so that, 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 that's, and, and, and more liberal concepts. And if you watch some of the old structures and videos about the psychology of introducing socialism and communism and how that intermingles to capture our free capital venture system that we are made to have and we're given the chance to have when they capture that essence and take that structure away through the educational psyche behind my generation and the generations under me and the generations under that. That's a very tough thing to compete with. So are you with a plan for uh, correction of the well, of of yeah, absolutely. For the educational, children. absolutely. For the That's one of the things. But what really needs to happen is we need to get a hold of the social media and all the news stations simultaneously walk in there with the boys, grab everybody, grab the video cam cameras, and make sure that people already are in lockdown so they can't move and go face to face and put it on all the televisions and just give them the shock therapy all at once. Otherwise, it's going to take too long. It's going to take way too long, and we're going to be uh, my gener my my kids, or my child, and your children are going to be just left with it because they're not going to have the mental capacity to know about chemtrails because the obedience and stand in line from cradle to grave will be so great that they won't know how to stand in their own line. And that's sad. I've heard the concept mentioned melling yourself in. Is there mechanics about that? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, it's kind of what I gave this gentleman right here. You mail yourself in and mail yourself. I always remember to mail yourself out. Yeah. I've, I've mailed myself in and I got <laughs> locked down. You got to be able to have the, the C lane open, a letter of safe conduct to, to mail yourself out. Give yourself land passes. Give yourself, you know, there, there's, yeah, there's techniques to all of it. Different situations have different functions. Make sure that you hit your timelines as you hit your contracts into, into mailing locations. Make sure your 12B7 on your jointer is established and make sure your statement of a claim and that's through 12B6, 12B5, 4321 is all established in your protocol on your both both you're getting yourself into a situation and getting yourself out of a situation. It's very easy to get yourself into a situation. It's difficult to get yourself out of the situation and then you don't want to be collateral damage and a write-off liability if you've done a mission for somebody and where you become expendable. So that's where you also have to look at. There's a lot going on. Those mechanics are some yeah, in, in this, yeah, to when, if you watch this video, you're going to see it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but it's the, if you read, if you, the words that I gave this gentleman okay. and the words that I gave you will take you down that trail. Okay, and when you say yourself, you mean the probably syntax? Yes, yeah, can't live a life, vessel, you know, with the cargo thinking, yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes. What's your take on the two cents per ounce mail? Two two cents an ounce mail. I I, I have no. Probably a two cent. Probably since she's yeah. talking about the original global contract. Oh, give me your two cents. cent worth. Eighteen forty. Yeah. I, I I I have. Feasibly, it's not doable right now because of the the costs, right, of operation. So that would be something to consider. But you know, if people are doing that, that's that's on whatever that is that they can come up with, I guess that's on them. But if you pay for, I, I, I am, you should be able to pay for your, I know it's costs are always difficult, but you get what you pay for, okay? And if you pay for quality, right? So I'm more about putting quality back into to our, to our things, to our material things, not the stuff that they're giving us. I don't need equipment that's gonna spy on me in my home. I want something made out of steel and iron that's going to last. And when I put circuitry into my circuit boards, I want a superconductor in there that will never break down so I don't have to go fix it. So I, I, I like quality. And I believe everybody has the chance and the choice to have quality in our lives. Real steel, not this plastic superficial world. The plastic superficial world of what they give us is what they want us to have. It has no longevity. Your washers and dryers will break down. All these things will happen. And what does that do? It costs you, it costs you, it costs you. How would you like to buy a vessel that worked for the rest of your life? What do you think you could do with that money that you saved? Could you put it towards your family, towards your loved ones, towards something that you would want to do for your enjoyment, for your satisfaction? So these guys doing the two cent thing, are you pulling somebody over on somebody? Maybe. Are you getting the quality of the service that you want? Probably not. Don't be mad. You get what you pay for. What's your opinion on the difference between the post office and the USPS? Two separate corporations. No opinion, I run them both. It's a shipping thing. Universal Postal Union. Yeah. Don't worry. I run China, too. <laughs> <laughs> you own the whole world. Active, or which has more legit? None of them. They're all using fraudulent grammar. They all have closure of the grammar, and they're using it doing exactly what Robert's saying. They know about the grammar. They're using the grammar to get it, claim that all post offices are broke. Meanwhile, they're collecting on two sets of books because whenever there's a debit, there's a, there's a credit. I mean, I don't want to go through the, I'm not, this is not a banking seminar, so that's a whole different game. You guys aren't paying for that. So, so when, when you buy a new car these days, they have uh, the spyware that's already installed. And terrible the thing. Control Ter stuff. Terrible thing. Is there any contract that we can have with, you know, to purchase Yeah, we, we, go, we can march down to those factories that are making it, surround them. Grab the owners, grab the shareholders of the company, and beat the snot out of them. <laughs> <laughs> Give them such crap. Oh, man, right. <laughs>
Yeah, there's things that can be done. Yeah. Something's got to be done because they only get tough love. Well, you I mean, know, the salesman, he wants, you know, if you tell them your conditions of they, they can't give it to purchase, you. Purchase, then they can't give it. They, they can't give it to you. Yeah. No. Because it's not about customer service. It's about obedience. Stand in line. First grade, you stand here. Second grade, you stand here. They're training you. Training you. So when you come up and ask those questions, your children will never think to ask those questions. You have fortunately enough seen enough in your life. You're old enough to see that there was... Think about how life was in the 60s for you. Yeah. How was it in the 70s? In the 60s, everybody was excited about the space thing and going to the moon and, you know... When oh, well, that's, that's all been buried you know, in uh, technology. JFK got killed. I mean, everybody's glued to the TV. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With a limo yeah. driver turn around and blast him. He's bad. I mean, it was all lots, lots of patriotism. Yeah, 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 yeah. But think about what happened. Stayed up late at night watching, you know, watching those big loon, loon landings. And oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. So think about the quality of life. Think about how you felt about rich. Yeah, th 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 yeah, and, 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 and guess what the really unique thing back then was? The one unique thing back, the, got, yeah, if you, if something broke down, somebody in your family, if not you, could fix it. There was mechanical application of thought, which creates deductive reasoning. Where's that now? Yes. So, with the uh, the quantum math and the language and the flag combined together, what are you going to call it going forth? Just correct communication parts. They said it's grammar, quantum mathematics, communication, dialogues, whatever. So when we send text that on a, on a contract or a document with you? Oh, you want to have your word syntax key code there, yeah. And I, I'm sorry, guys, that I didn't have a board. If I had a board at this presentation, I would have done a lot more things in that application. It's just very hard if I can't diagram things, too. I apologize about that. I did. I asked for a whiteboard. Give me a feel. And on the IDs. Uh, yes. Now I, everything that I seem to deal with with the fiction world, they always ask for a federal ID or a government-issued ID. Correct. What is going to be the fix going forward with the quantum? Correct. Well, it will depend on the social structure of the false flags that they bring. If we can stop the false flags, the false flags wear the, on the psyche to create a response for people to create policy to infringe more upon your rights. And they scare people into believing that to be true. So this is the gauge that we have to, if there are false flags, which there are, we need to have good people within the law enforcement community have the courage to come through a bridge to let the sector know that this is wrong and not be killed for it on their side because they all get fired shut up, dumb up, dumb up, dumb up, dumb up. So that is a difficult question to ask because until we can create that bridge and that haven to where that false flag occurs and that constable or that sheriff or that, that police officer who sees the wrong has the courage to step up and then he has a platform to put him and his family in because think about what he's trying to do. He's providing for his loved ones. When his lieutenant or his sergeant tells him, hey, shh, we're going to have to shut our mouths on this one. But, 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 you want a job? Come on, man. We're all in this together. Calm down. Until we can create that trust back to some kind of bridge or some kind of people concept for the people. That, and I think the sheriffs, once they see this, will learn that the people are here and we want to trust them. We want to trust them, but we can't trust them right now because every time one of these scenarios happens, you got all these actors in place. So since they work for us and we can't trust them, how do we bridge that gap? So it'll be about going to, you know, uh, I'm more than welcome to go talk to any police department 
anywhere, you know, I, and I will share these concepts and try to change their thinking. I'm more than willing to mail, you know, but I wouldn't, to go into their vessels, I would mail myself in, <laughs> in there and out of there. It's not that I don't trust them, I just been clobbered. And so, on, on the ID or, or credentials yeah. question, what about uh, passports or world passport? What do you recommend? Uh, well, I, I just have a U.S. passport, you know, just, just because, you know, it's, it's, I'm not trying to, uh, I'm not trying to disrupt. I'm trying to get along, but I have caveats within my construct so that when you pull up my passport, it has a, a lot of closure on. You have to admit, have to realize, I met with the Deputy Director of Homeland Security in 2004 with David. They came outside of the building. This is in Crystal City outside of Washington, D.C. They came outside the building and he told me, Russell, Homeland Security has zero authorization to exist. However, the American people are so stupid, they're buying into it. Well, that's a lot to lay on me because I wanted to reach up and grab this guy, right? Here I am with David. He's got a bunch of goons there, right? All his people with guns and clubs. I got nobody with guns and clubs with me. I'm just looking at the guy and I'm like, well, what's the volition? He goes, ah, oh, don't worry, it doesn't, doesn't, this doesn't affect you. Well, it does affect me because it hurts my fellow mankind. You have to stand in line, you have to take off your shoes, you have to stand on one foot, you have to take off your belt. The, the technology that we have for biometrics can be done outside. They can shut this down right as you step on the property. Because they know they're tracking everybody. Now it comes down to the accountability of the people. Can we trust one another not to shoot each other? Can we get that message out there? Because if you can get people to trust each other and share from that trust and network with that trust and that friendship, at that point, a lot of your questions about IDs and all this and that will be quashed. So it's a moral, ethical thinking, and we have to figure out how to change that. It's very difficult. Those are good questions. As far as the false flags go, back, I just want to throw some real quick. Back when Matt started, when this game was drunk driving, took one lane to get her child hit by drunk driving. And the news was all over that. They actually came to the mom, and the family was there, the grandma, the grandpa, and Nowadays, you see the Sandy Hook garbage and all these false flags going on, these shootings, and they do not, none of the relatives are interviewed. There are no relatives. There is no family. You're looking at actors. Those are false flags, and they're broadcast on left and right news. That's what Trump's telling It's all fake news. It's all social engineering efforts to get the guns. They're trying to pass laws. They want to pass laws, just like Matt. Yeah. That went into effect fast. These guys are trying to do the same thing with the gun law, but there's no real family. Stage. There is no family to interview. The news doesn't go interview nobody. There's no kids crying. Where's daddy? Right? Where's Where's the kids? Where's my daddy? Where's that one? You don't see it because there's. Yeah. So monitoring that. So the on the IDs and whatnot. I could go out and create one, but I'm not going to have to, because the government will will come to me, in fiction and join as a fact. And we'll fix it together and have everybody harmoniously. There is a common one for the, for the jury. The jury the oh, uh, oh, no, yeah, Title 28. 28. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, no, it's uh, Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, sorry. Oh, that's FRC. 12B7 through 12B1. Yeah, but we call it document contract because of the grammar. Document okay. contract claims sections. Uh, 12B1, 12B7 through 12B1, is that the United States Code also? No, it's in the same one. Right. So anybody in the current... Uh, fiction leadership role of the, the planetary countries uh, approaching, uh, have, have they contacted you, communicated with you to change the this year? They're contacting me for um, financial counsel for navigation. So I have a skill set when it comes to shipping that is unprecedented and 
they're looking at using that as a function servicing system and hopefully not trying to use me as the <laughs> expendable damage at the end so we're in the process of getting our people in position to oversee missions for that and not allow certain things to happen and you know we i gotta get people with claims of the life and i mean i, I got a task in front of me here but uh, logistical support from the eye in the sky would definitely be help <laughs> so um, the u.s is technically just the district of columbia correct so, um, and the federal courthouses and the and the post offices right, so and then you have a state which is just a political entity correct and the country is the same as well correct it's under territorial because all states were okay so i want you to go, when you go to washington do you go to olympia ever okay so go into the governor's office and look at the fla flag pole but before you do that, study, I apologize, Arm, Army Regulation 840-10, 2-1 <coughs> through 210. Then I want you to go look at that flag standard and shoot me an email, tell me what you now think. Okay. okay. That'll, that'll answer some questions. If, if uh, these fraudulent mortgage claims were paid and the money uh, given to the, to the damaged parties <coughs> And the damaged parties go and you know they have this money uh, wouldn't uh, you know on the way that the banking systems multiplied almost like 400 times on the yeah, uses the money wouldn't that say, uh, financially put the put the planet or the people in a better position well here's what you have to consider back to this trillion dollars or whatever nonsense of <laughs> of debt <laughs> Who's holding the credit on that? Because that balances out to zero. So the problem is, is that the banking system they're doing away with, and they're trying to create a different one. So I don't really foresee that unless it's launched into a new banking system. Because they did, they're, they're it, do you watch the stock market? Uh, I have in the past. Okay, so just watch the watch the bond yields, okay? And then when that when that thing flattens like it does and it starts to dip, yeah. the the vig goes way. I mean the the, the points or the, the cost goes way up and they don't borrow the banks don't make any money lending out lending the money. So it's going to be a real doggy dog collection on everybody's debt is what they're going to try to do. And they're going to they've authorized debtors prison to throw everybody in jail. So that has to be it's just a fiasco, so don't borrow any money. I was going to chime in on that and say in, uh, in Iceland there was a pot of pans revolution where the people overthrew the bankers. And yeah, there's more of us. The, if you look into that, that's really it's a real interesting story. The, 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 in order for that to happen in this country, the sheriff's department and the police departments would have to stand down, but they stand down for everything else. <laughs> so, so, you know, it, it might not be a hard sell, the problem is, is you know, what do they want? What the cost do they want? Because they stand out. I mean, they don't tell us the truth. It's, it's just real difficult to deal with at this point. Isn't there some way you can just move the accounts payable to the accounts receivables and have it go to zero anyway on the accounting side? Can you just move it over? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But then somebody would have to confess that there was credits. Did they do that in 2008? Or did they that? I, I, yeah. That was kind not of what Iceland did. With, with, they, they just zeroed out all the yeah. banks. Yeah. If you went Jubilee, now, you could. You, you could do <coughs> Jubilee. There's a ton of things that could be done. I, I'm, I'm of the volition and the thinking that everything should have value. So I'm more of, of a gold and platinum and silver guy. Uh, it, it, it have an asset back everything. Uh, and I just don't think that the paper gig has worked for us or nor the derivatives. And uh, everything is uh, the appraisals on everything and the credit ratings and all this is just totally out of control. Yeah, and, and see, so, and you're trying to stop the. I mean, you got black ops money. You got people bringing money into the system. You have people <coughs> authorizing washing money. It's just, it just doesn't end. I mean, it just goes and goes and goes. It's a huge <laughs> thing. Uh, so, do you support the BRICS going to the currency? Well, the thing with the BRICS is I've not been paid on that. They took my charter that I wrote. David delivered to China, and 45 days later, they announced BRICS. So I've been paid for the use of that. So I'm looking forward to have sitting down with the shareholders of BRICS and getting my, getting my pound, of, if I don't get my money, get my pound of flesh out of them, shut them down. The economic stabilization fund created in 34 when they put all the gold. They were bankruptcy in 34. 
can't laws are not applicable. ESF was there. Not valid now. No. no. Well, how come? Corporate souls and oversight from Congress. Congress. Corporate souls under bills of the wedding with Federal Reserve notes. Federal Reserve notes is a bill of the wedding authorized by the U.S. Treasury or the U.S. Postal Service. The U.S. Postal Service has no constitution, no authorization, ceased to, to exist in 1999. All nonsense. So that like gold and ESF that's down there in the Federal Reserve building in New York. It's all mine. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We ca I, I captured all that. Yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah. Th that's all mine. But, I didn't heard anything about the but, ESF, but but I've got to uh, uh, put it through my clearing houses and and. and do things there mechanically. Okay. I'll get to that at some point. Okay. I just got to. I got to get to a few guys, <laughs> okay. and, and that has to be delegated back to the people. Mm -hmm. And see, and it still has to. You still have to have government function in place. They still need paid. With the system that I built, it's a consumption tax, a ten percent. Never comes out. It just goes on the on the tariff that come that you buy when you buy your goods, and that feeds it back into the system and pays for the whole thing. Yes. And it's just a flat. Never changes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's a true story. I don't know about anybody. I just gotta go do. I I I until I. Here's the thing. I'm not gonna throw stones at anyone until I meet them. I'm not gonna make assumptions about somebody unless I meet them. Because you don't know anybody until you can look them in. The, no, I'm not invited to anything like that. No, 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 no. I I, I would have too much to say. And and it's a hard pill to swallow sometimes. And I, I, I get that. I, I'm not invited to certain things. And I'm just cool with that. But I hope everybody has good volition and I hope they care about the people. And that's what I hope. That's my hope. Since all um, cities and municipalities are just corporations. Yes. Um, and anybody that registers to vote becomes an employee or a volunteer corporation. Yes. Um, the sheriff is nothing more than just a corporate position in a private corporation yes. for the employees of that corporation. Yes. So if one would be part of that corporation, would they still be under the jurisdiction of the titles? Okay, that's a good question. I don't know how much courtroom ex experience that you have, but they're real funny about might makes right. So you can be dead right, and it just depends on like, I go in there and I stay meek and humble, but I stay firm. I stay on point and I stay level headed. When it gets intense, it gets intense. I just deal with it. And I'm, you know, I don't lose my cool. I've been very good about that and they have tried and tried. And you just get on your hands and knees and be thankful for the lesson that you're learning and you just move on. And that's about all you can do. And you, you, you stay in your meditations and you stay with your God or whatever it is. I know what I do, but I'm not going to conjecture that into this situation. So I know what I know and I know what I believe in, but that's what I believe in. And I'm not someone out here that thumps people with those type of concepts. Because everybody has a right to believe in whatever their education and experience and their, their capacity to navigate themselves that's on them, and I honor all that. I can't trespass, say one's better than the other. I'm just gonna be me. How do you like to be addressed? How do I be, uh, I'm just Russell. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm just Russell, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, just Russell. Yeah, if you're writing me, Russell hyphen J. Colin Gold. Yeah. Two L's. <laughs> Why does control have two L's in it? Okay, so control has two L's. If you look in all dictionaries prior 1800, control was always spelled with two L's. I believe it was taken out on purpose so that you could not have control and moved to one L. I don't know the history behind that, but if you look at all the dictionaries, 
they would make control incomplete if they took out the two L's. But from its foundation, from all the dictionaries that I've read from the 1400s on, it always had two L's. I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who, when that changed. I just know that in the newer dictionaries prior to the 1800s, the two, the two L's are not in it. Yeah, yeah, it's just something that I just, like, wait a minute. They did that for a reason. <laughs> Am I not supposed to have control here? <laughs> the uh, line on the OW and the AW. And oh, yeah, yeah, the diphthong. The have diphthong. You, have you, yeah, the diphthong is all relevant for sure, yeah. So, uh, have, are, are you using the diphthong within your construct? Oh, absolutely, I use diphthong, yeah. I've, um, when I deal with the word ownership, that way I deal with it. That way, I'm not using a vowel followed by two consonants. Okay. Right? So there are specific words that the diphthong is relevant to create the, the vowel and the longer sound. Good question. Okay, we, uh, it's only with the OW, not with the AW? Or oh, you can do, you, well, you do AW as well. Yeah. Anything with a you know, double uh, a vowel and double the consonant, turn that other consonant into a vowel. Well, there are. Like my, my son's name, Edward. I saw some older things where, you know, it's a vowel and two consonants, so is it like E-A, D-W-A-R-D, I've seen that, and... Yeah, you could go look at what D means under representation of diphthong, okay. and, and that'll probably give you, I don't, I don't, sorry, I've never made that study before, it's a good question, I'm, I'll, I'll look into it, I haven't done diphthongs in quite a while. Yesterday we were talking about expelling worms, how do we expel the mycelin? Oh, that's a good question. That's, I mean, that's the biggest, or biggest threat on the planet, it destroys yeah, all... All earthlings. Yeah. It damages all earthlings. MMS is awesome. MMS. Totally awesome. It is awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a, I got a bunch of bottles of MMS. A friend of mine had a, going in for a root canal on Monday. It was a Saturday. I had him brush his teeth with it. He brushed his teeth, swished with it, and an intense moment of discomfort and went away. Teeth felt better, came back the next day, brushed his teeth again. Monday, canceled the root canal. And oh, yeah, absolutely. He had DMSO mixed with the MMS. Yeah, I got oh, you. Yeah. That's, That's what I have. That's exactly what I have. Two, Fine, no yeah, that's exactly what I have. I, I also have a lot of uh, like uh, biophotons, and I got I got a lot of. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got that one. Yep, this organization that they set up a church so they could sell it as a sacrament. The MMS, so it's a sacrament, and now you're coming with the church. And the, the, sacrament. The, the guys that I deal with a lot in the metals and the, and the different psyops, they're big into the radionics and a lot of a lot of the crazy, crazy mm -hmm. alternative stuff. I know some guys that are very advanced with the NSA in different fields and that. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, I know. He, uh, Horton's met a couple of or one of the guys, anyways. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. These are Tesla freaks, man. They are. They got. Have you uh, looked at uh, Ben Wheeler's stuff on magnetism and the, the new concepts of magnetism? That's pretty. Oh yeah, Ben Wheeler. Like, uh, Wheel, Wheeler. 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 Yeah, that's pretty interesting stuff. Yeah, there's, there's really bright guys all over the place. You just got to be willing to do put your due diligence in and your homework and, and search the stuff out. I just have concepts of shipping, banking, military. That's that's my field. I, but I get to meet a lot of really I'll cool people. <laughs> a lot of real cool, real cool. Yeah, a lot of real, real cool people. So it's a blessing. It's a, I thank you guys for coming. I, I really appreciate you guys coming to this to this, uh, this funeral thing that I had and all the. You know, you got to hear a different side of the constructs that the world has not known. Uh, hasn't needed to know because uh, uh, David and I. You know, we're working in a duality, but now that he's gone, the constructs have to come out so people can comprehend where they're at. So, thank you guys. Thank you, thank you.